All right, welcome everybody to the first installment of the Picus Red Report 2024. My name is Aaron Harrell. I'm a senior solutions architect here at Picus. I have been in the breach and attack simulation space for security controls validation space for roughly about eight years. Um, I've spent a total of 25 years in cybersecurity, spent a lot of time with the big vendors out there as well. Um, and then, of course, made the made the jump over the fence to security controls validation, and it's been uh, it's been a great ride. I uh, really enjoy this technology, um, and it's very pertinent, really, to any organization. But what I wanted to do today was demonstrate what it would look like from a Picus platform perspective to execute the Picus Red Report threat template, really to gain visibility into how your compensating controls would respond to those top 10 techniques that were found to be most prevalently used by threat actors in 2023. And this actually marks the fourth year of the Red Report publication. So this report is going to provide a deep dive into the evolving threat landscape, presenting a detailed analysis of adversaries' most prevalent TTPs used throughout the past year. Now, this research is conducted by the Picus Labs team. They examined over 600,000 malware samples and assessed more than 7 million instances of MITRE attack techniques. So it's going to deliver to security teams that invaluable insight uh, into the techniques that pose the most critical cyber risk to your organization. And this year's findings were especially important, really for organizations that are looking to enhance their defense mechanisms against those hunter killer type malware um, that are going to systematically target and impair existing security controls that you have in place. But these hunter killer type activities, um, they're actively hunting for your defenses in those compromised systems and kill those processes. And by doing this, it really ensures that they remain stealthy for a much longer period of time. So what the Picus platform is going to do is it's going to give you the ability to run those real world binary attacks in your production environment, safely of course, to gain quantifiable evidence of how your compensating controls are responding to those attacks. That way you can make business decisions based on empiric data, remove those assumptions. So what we're gonna do first is let's jump into the dashboard. Over on the dashboard, we have two sections. We've got our overall prevention results. We also have our overall detection results. From a prevention perspective, we break these down into really two areas. One, threat results. This could encompass an entire ransomware campaign. So if I'm running the Black Byte ransomware campaign, we're gonna tell you whether that campaign was blocked or not blocked. Then we're gonna take it a step further. As far as that campaign or the Black Byte ransomware campaign is concerned, it encompasses email, endpoint, as well network infiltration. So we'll tell you whether those objectives were unachieved or achieved. So if I'm a blue teamer, I might want to focus on what's not blocked so I can get right to the meat of the problem and go mitigate those issues as quickly as possible. Over to the right, we have our overall detection results. This is going to come in the form of an integration. So we would like to focus on aggregation points. So your EDR, your XDR, your SIM. We can tell you whether those threats were logged, not logged, as well alerted and not alerted. So if I'm a SOC analyst, I might want to focus on what's not alerted. Once again, get immediate results to the problem and go mitigate those issues as quickly as possible. We're going to scroll down a little bit. I'll go over these briefly. We look at security score over time as well. So if I look over the last year, I can see whether I'm getting better over time or whether I'm regressing. Now, you see a lot of peaks and valleys here. I don't worry too much about these valleys. What I worry about is how quickly we recover from these valleys, get our security posture back up to where we need it to be in order for the business to run appropriately for our environment. We do an attack module breakdown based on the kill chain. So from a delivery mechanism perspective, we do network infiltration. So your palos, your checkpoints, whatever the case may be, your perimeter controls, whether you look at your prevention results as well as your detection results. We can also do web application firewalls. So if you're running an Nginx or an Imperva, whatever the case, we can test the efficacy of your WAF devices. Email infiltration. 
So if we're running Proofpoint, Mimecast, O365, whatever the case may be there, we can test the efficacy of your email controls. Then we jump over into post exploitation, looking at those Windows endpoint controls, your Linux, as well as your Mac OSs. We can go all the way to data exfiltration to make sure that no intellectual property is being exfiltrated out of the environment, as well URL filtering. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we've got overall top simulation ranks. What we're doing here is we're scraping the metadata from our entire customer base, the PICUS community, mind you, of what the most popular threats that they're running. Maybe it's the most popular threat templates that they're running, as well the most popular attack tactics that they're running. Down below, we have an overall status of security devices. So we focus a lot on those perimeter controls. And with that, we're the only vendor in this space that is going to give you vendor-specific mitigations. And I'll actually get into that once we get into the results of the simulations. But this is very big. What we like to focus on is mean time to mitigation. We don't just want to give you a problem or test a control without giving you the answers to the test. It's very critical in our business. And then lastly, everything that you will see within the PICUS platform is mapped to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. All those tactics, techniques, sub-techniques, giving you visibility into your prevention results, your detection and alerting results. To take that a step further, let's hop over to the MITRE ATT&CK heat map. So here, we're giving you an overview of your total mapped action count, as well as the map techniques that you've mapped out, as well as the map tactics. So we can see our prevention results, our detection and alerting results. Now, when we talk about a library, we talk about our threat library and where we hold all of the threats within the PICUS platform. So from this perspective, if I want to start filling out this map, so to speak, I don't have to go to that threat library to start populating this heat map. I can directly come to Technique 1078, Valid Accounts, and run the simulations from here. Speaking of the threat library, let's hop over there and take a look at the threat library. So that same PICUS Labs team that puts out the PICUS Red Report also maintains our threat library. Their sole mission in life here at PICUS is to track threat actors, all their tactics, their techniques, their procedures, their sub-techniques, as well their motivations. They will then reverse engineer these attacks and populate them into our threat library. We release new threats each and every single day. As you can see, today is actually the 29th, and we have actually put in quite a few threats that have come out today. So we think that's extremely important. We want to keep you abreast to the latest and greatest threats that are out there, that we're finding, that are out there in the wild, and get them into our threat library as quickly as possible so you can test the efficacy of your control based on that new and emerging threat. Now, we have a 24-hour SLA. On top of that, if there is a Wall Street Journal front pager that comes out, say solar winds or something to that nature, we will have that out to our customers within 24 hours. But what I have seen um, so far since I've been here at Picus, they're usually out within about three to four hours. So we're very quick to turn that around so you can test your controls based on that new threat. Up here to the left, we have all attack modules. So you can see we have over 5,200 threats that encompass over 23,000 single disparate actions or objectives. We break those down by network infiltration attacks, endpoint, WAF, email, data exfil, and URL filtering. We can also create templates. With these templates, once again, managed by our PICUS Labs team, we're going to go up here and we're going to actually go to suggested by PICUS Labs. And as you can see, that first one is the top 10 attack techniques based on the Red Report 2024. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. So actually, the number one technique that made um, the biggest splash um, in this year's report was technique uh, 1055, um, which is process injection. So what we've done is we've created a process injection microemulation plan. So I can actually expand that and see what that emulation plan is. It's many, many different types of objectives based on defense evasion or process injection. So when we think of some of the threat actors that utilize process injection, um, we think of, you know, UNC 2970 or APT41 or APT32, APT37, just to name a few. Now, process injection is a 
defense evasion technique. It's commonly employed within malware or fileless adversary attacks. It entails running arbitrary code within the address space of another process. So process injection is going to improve stealth. And some variants and techniques also achieve very, very good persistence. So running code in the context of another process could allow that process um, to have elevated privileges. So execution via a process injection also evades uh, uh, detection from our security products. Since that execution is masked under another process, it's very easy to miss. So we want to test our controls based on that. So very easy um, to simulate a specific threat or, of course, threat template. In this case, I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to click simulate now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an agent that I have deployed within my environment to simulate this against. Now, this agent could be attached to an operating system, of course. Also, we want to deploy agents based on our endpoint security policies. So if I have a, an end user group and they all have the same policy, I just need to deploy one agent for that environment. Now, then again, if I have my servers over here, I'm running Windows Server Operating Systems, and they have a different policy attached to them than my end users, I need to deploy an agent to that policy so I can test the efficacy of that policy. I have actually already run this specific template. So let's actually go look at the results. And there it is right there. So in this case, we have our overall prevention results. We have our overall detection results. As you can see, we have our threat name. This is that process injection microemulation plan. There were 30 single disparate actions or objectives associated with this threat. And we see our prevention results, our detection, and our alerting results. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom here. And let's look at this system information discovery micro emulation plan. It has 21 actions associated with it. And as you can see here, based on those integrations that we have in our lab for CrowdStrike and Splunk, this is gonna be our single point of truth. So what I can do is I can actually toggle back and forth to the results. As you can see, CrowdStrike didn't block it, as well didn't alert on it. However, if I slip over to Splunk, I can see that it did get logged. So I'm validating that my CrowdStrike logs are making it back to Splunk. The only problem is here is I didn't have visibility because it wasn't alerted. If we scroll to the bottom, we see that we gather information from system using seatbelt. We see that it wasn't blocked. However, it was logged and it was alerted. So a human was notified that something bad has happened. That's a good thing. That's a good finding. Now we need to go take action against that to prevent that from taking place. So I'm easily just going to click on this artifact and I'm going to get the artifacts card. So you're going to get an overview of the artifact. So here's our action ID, our kill chain phase, our tactics and techniques being utilized. Here's the attack timeline, when it started, when it ended, when it was logged, when it was alerted, as well the affected systems for this specific objective. We're also going to give you the payload that we utilize for each and every objective in the PICUS platform. So if I am a red teamer or I have that skill set, um, what I can do is I can actually copy this process manipulate this process in any way, shape, or form that I want to in our threat builder, ingest it back into the PICUS platform and weaponize it, enriching that threat library. So very, very customizable. We can see any terminal processes that took place on that endpoint during this attack. We can see the logs associated with it. So pulling in that attribution from CrowdStrike, pulling in that attribution from Splunk, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Splunk, and I can see all of those logs and alerts. Once again, I can also click further into, say, this process creation and get the raw log associated with it. Just more evidence. Next, we look at prevention. From this perspective, we're going to give you generic mitigation suggestions based on this specific objective. We're also going to reference the MITRE attack techniques and tactics that are being utilized so you can go mitigate this problem as soon as possible. Then we have detection. 
So detection, once again, comes in the form of integration of whether that content source is SIM, whether that content source is EDR. We're going to integrate with those via API. As you can see, what, what all we have in our lab, we have Splunk, we've got QRadar, ArcSight, CB, Microsoft Sentinel, as well CrowdStrike. So if I'm a Splunk shop and I'm not detecting this objective, here's your rule query. Copy and paste this into your Splunk instance, and you're now detecting this nefarious activity. If I'm CrowdStrike, if I'm a CrowdStrike shop, here's your event search query. You can easily copy and paste this into your CrowdStrike implementation. As well, we have the IOA rule query. So you can either do one of two things here. You can copy or paste it, or you can deploy this query directly to CrowdStrike, immediately detecting this nefarious activity. Very simple, very easy to do, very streamlined. What we want to do is we want to cut down that mean time to mitigation, giving you the answers to the test. Now, when we look at other simulations, and let's look at other simulations, that's exactly how you would run that top 10 technique. Very simple, very easy to do. We're also looking at the results based on the testing so we can see exactly how our controls responded getting that evidence of effectiveness so we can make those business decisions, this time based on empiric data, once again. Looking at other simulations, if we want to look at um, specific, say, network. And let me find a good one here. And let's just do, let's just do the buy in line daily simulation. So what we want to do for continuous security validation is just that. We want to test. We want to tune. We want to retest, validating that our tuning worked. Now we're preventing. Now we're logging. Now we're alerting appropriately. Now what I want to do is I want to schedule these assessments, these simulations to run on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. The cadence is completely up to you. But that's your security control validation, your continuous validation. So if at any point in time, there's any type of changes made to the environment that I don't have purview into, it could be a policy change, could be a span port that be, gets spun up or down. Those have a direct reflect on my security posture. I need to know when we regress in our security posture. So if I'm blocking something one day, say I'm blocking this by line ransomware download and I'm detecting and I'm alerting, but tomorrow there's a change made to the environment and I'm no longer blocking this, I need to know about it. So the PICUS platform can inform you and alert you when you've regressed in your security posture. So when we look at this network infiltration and we can see the buy line ransomware download threat, once again, toggling back and forth from CrowdStrike to Splunk, I can see that I didn't block. I did log it, but I didn't alert it. This allows me to easily, once again, get into that artifacts card, get the answers to the test as quickly as possible. Once again, an overview. Once again, we have the logs. We have prevention. And our prevention comes in the form of vendor-specific mitigations. So if I'm a Palo shop or I'm a Cisco or I'm a checkpoint shop, and I'm just going to kind of pick on Palo here a little bit. Uh, Palo is an excellent firewall. Um, but if I'm a Palo shop and I am not blocking this variant download, Here's the signature that you need. Very simply, copy and paste this into your Palo policy, and you're now blocking this variant download. We got our signature version as well as the product version for Palo that it supports. They say, Aaron, wow, I got to do that for each and every one of these objectives? Not at all. We've got mitigation prevention insights. So if I look at my prevention, and I'm going to go to Palo again, we can see from a Palo perspective, we ran 393 actions against Palo. It blocked 328. It didn't block 65. Of those not blocked actions, here's the 45 signatures that you need in order to go mitigate that problem. There's the signature ID, the signature name. We utilize vendor severity levels as well as the positive score impact and the not blocked actions that are going to be associated with those. So I can easily click on this and get that signature. Now, what I can also do is export this, get into the appropriate hands of the people that manage my Palo firewalls in bulk mitigate. 
We can all do also do that with detection. Once again, here's all of our rules, all of our actions associated with our Splunk instance. As well, CrowdStrike, that, that key partnership with CrowdStrike gives us the ability to easily get these rules, get these actions, mitigate those problems, as well deploy that query to my, to my CrowdStrike instance. Very simple, very easy to do. So just wanted to do a quick overview, um, give you some insight into not only the Picus platform, but also the Red Report 2024. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and found some insights into it. Um, if you have any questions, um, please give us a call. We're more than happy to help out in any way, shape, or form we can. Take care.